Congratulations, thank you for clicking on the video. This is not about Linux. Today we're going to talk about audio equipment. And uh, for those of you who have been around my channel for quite some time, you know that I used to talk about this all the time. I do have a Facebook group, which I call JC's Phono Works, where I post a lot of stuff that has to do with music and audio. And for those of you who are into this, you'll enjoy this video because it's going to be a tour of my current audio system. Now, Poverty has made me look at this in a different way, and so I've had this little project going for the last few years called Adventures in Medium Fidelity, where I just dig up stuff that's cheap and sounds good and put it all together and see what happens. So I'm going to take you through each component hooked up to this system, and we'll talk about them, and uh, hopefully you'll like it. All right, first thing we're going to talk about here is this lovely little box. And thank goodness there's a good light on this camera because <laughs> if there wasn't, you wouldn't be able to see a thing because this is the darkest corner of the room, which is always where you want to put your stereo equipment. This is a A&R Cambridge A60 amplifier. And probably the nicest thing that I actually have in the system it was put together for me by a fellow named Michael Hood who lives in Ireland and he sent it to me a few years ago and he just really wanted me to have one of these he loves these amplifiers and he had a bunch of them and he said I'm gonna rebuild one and send it to you these were popular in the UK and Europe in the late 70s and into the 80s and it's really a basic little amp you got a phono input here there's a tuner, there is a, a place for a CD, so obviously this one's a slightly later model. It does say CD or does it say aux? Yep, it says CD. And then you have uh, buttons there where you can put in a filter and you can switch it to mono. So it's really quite a cool little box here, for sure. That's a tape monitor. It looks and acts the way it's supposed to and a mono switch which is something I really like and then you got four basic controls here uh, you got volume, bass, treble and balance then a headphone jack and then a power button that's it and this is a really neat little amplifier 40 watts per channel very clean got a great sound to it and Michael did a good job of reworking it so I really have enjoyed it and the main thing I like about it it's got a very very good phono stage for my turntable and it also has a very quiet headphone amplifier, which is something that I like too. And then down here, let's take a look at the headphones that I use with this particular setup. These are made by Audio-Technica. I got these a few years ago. And they are studio headphones, you'll see there. So instead of having one of those little 1 8 inch plugs on the end, this one actually has a big quarter inch jack on it. And on top of that, uh, it's 600 ohms which uh, works nice with older amplifiers. Now this piece of equipment right here, this is a TAC AD500, which is an oddball. Uh, it has two components built into one. This side is a CD player, and this side is a cassette deck. And I do have a bunch of cassettes that I keep around from my radio days, so I need to have a way to play them. And I keep a tape in there all the time to uh, keep dust from getting on the heads and everything. And I don't use it very often, but it's really nice to have. And you can also use this to transfer from CD to cassette. And you can record tapes. I don't do that anymore. I don't have any real reason to, but it's there and it plays back tapes like the you know Type 2 and Type 4 tapes, chrome and metal, and it has Dolby B noise reduction on it. Perfectly fine for what I do. So those are the two basic components right there. Now here's one that I really like. This is the turntable I'm using right now, and it's the only one that I currently have. I used to have a bunch, but I've packed them up and sold them off and got rid of them because I like this one so well. This is a U-Turn Orbit turntable. I've had this for probably about three or four months now. Belt-driven, completely manual, handmade in the United States of America, and dirt cheap. These are really not that expensive. You can get into one of these for less than 500 US dollars. So that's pretty cool. And I haven't done anything to it. It is as shipped. And the only thing that I did do was, is I replaced the cartridge. And that is an Audio-Technica AT95E on there. Um, I was looking at cartridges for this. I ordered it with an Ortofon OM5E. 
it sounded all right, but it was plain, and I really like Audio Technicas. And I was looking at Audio Technica cartridges and Engolka that were, you know, like way more expensive. And this ad kept popping up for the 1895E, and I said, I'm going to go ahead and buy one and try it. And I'm glad I did because it works really well. This is the OA2 arm that uh, they have developed for later models of the Orbit. And it really is a fine tone arm. And uh, because of the fact that this is going on YouTube, I cannot actually play you any music. But I can show you the operation of the turntable. And just very carefully put the needle down on the record. And... Mm, Get a little taste. Do your youngsters ever ask you, what did you do before television was invented? Now, sometimes it's hard to answer that question in a way that they'll understand. Of course, we, we read. And we played out in the fresh air a lot more. Or at least that's what we tell the kids. But maybe there's another answer. Ask them to come in now and listen to these wonderful bits of imaginative trivia. Yeah, that's a record series that talks about old-time radio, so I figured that wouldn't trip any copyrights on YouTube. I can play that for you. Doesn't sound too great since the records are 50 or 60 years old at this point, and they were never claimed to be high fidelity, but you get the point. And uh, the way this is set up, this is setting sitting on a table from the 40s that I'm using for a rack. It's very solid, and... The turntable itself is sitting on a marble chessboard to uh, give it a little bit of isolation. So you have this top, which is uh, cherry, and then it's sitting on a, a, just a, a piece of cloth to make it so it doesn't stick to it. And then we have that, and then the turntable sits on that. So that's how it's isolated at this point. It seems to work out quite well. Since the turntable is green, I wanted to get a green 45 adapter for it. And when I bought this... Uh, I actually ordered this. We used to have these in radio stations all the time. They're really cool because when you throw the 45 on top of it, it just sort of lands. The only problem is the modern ones are made out of really cheap plastic. So what I did was I filled it up with hot glue, and uh, that way it's got a little weight to it, and the records don't tend to slide under it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I could I could have ordered a metal one, but I wanted one that was green because it's a green turntable, and I ordered that color really because of the fact that um, when I was a little kid I had a record player and it was green and I thought it was neat that they were offering it in this color. A little accessory here. This is an AudioQuest carbon fiber record brush and we have an Audio Technica stylus brush and there's also a little chunk of uh, uh, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser down there that I dip the stylus into to clean out sometimes. One more thing to show you. I wanted to show you these little guys right here. This uh, is my latest acquisition. Actually, a birthday present. And these are Dayton Audio B562 Air speakers. And these are dirt cheap. They cost about, oh, $60. And they are actually a recommended component in stereo files. So I read about them. I said, boy, I should try those out. And I bought them because they are near-field monitors, which means they sound, little two-way speakers sound really good when you're sitting very close to them. And they have a AMT tweeter in there, and then they have a 7-inch woofer. And no, they will not shake the floor, but they're very clean and they sound very good. And for the price, I just absolutely couldn't resist them. And that was my birthday wish. I said I wanted one of those. And they're pretty well made. They're plain Jane, but they work really well. So all of this together is my hi-fi system and what I use to listen to music and these uh, milk crates. These are the real deal. They're actually from dairies. <laughs> I've had these for years and I've used them for speaker stands. So that's what they're for. And uh, when I want to come and do serious, serious listening, this is what I do. Come in here and listen to this stuff in here and in the corner of the bedroom and I'll show you the one in the living room and I'll explain why this one's not in the living room. So this is another system that I have set up in the living room right now um, and the reason why there's no turntable out here is because the floors in here are replacements and when you walk across it it causes a lot of vibration and 
a turntable setup in here will skip. But uh, these are the speakers I had been using for a long time. These are Sony B3000s. And they're all right, but they're not near field. Uh, it's not good to sit right close to them. And they are a little boomy for my tastes. Uh, they got lots of bass, but it's kind of a boomy bass. So I'll pause this and take that cover off. There we go. That's what it looks like with the cover off. Uh, Three-way speakers. There's not actually a crossover built in here. Uh, Sony kind of took some shortcuts when they built them. These sold for cheap, probably like $100, $200, between $100 and $200 when I bought them a few years ago. And so there's just a uh, capacitor that uh, keeps the low frequencies out of the mid and the tweeter. They don't sound too bad for what they are. They're okay. And I guess if you just like it loud, you're all right, right? That's Because <laughs> they are loud. They're pretty loud. Now, for the components that are in here, it's ta-da, yet another of those CD player cassette deck combinations. Only two companies ever made these, and I own both of them. This is a Realistic, or rather an Optimus, um, which is uh, a brand that Radio Shack made. And this is from the early 90s, 92 or 93. You can look it up in the catalog. This was not a cheap machine at the time. And it's a very high quality CD player with a decent quality cassette deck. And it uh, actually sounds really good for what it is. And then the amplifier below it, this is a uh, realistic um, STA-46. I think I've got that right. And it is a receiver from 1974. It's in the catalog. And very nice little system here. Uh, I've got it mainly for the radio out here in the living room, so I can listen to AM and FM. It's got some nice meters in here. I don't know whether that's going to focus on that, but you can tell when your station is tuned. And Not much of an antenna on this. i just got a long wire on it right now, because actually I use it more for AM than FM. It's got a very nice sounding AM side. So there's WGH, the little jingle there, and yeah, the pots are a little dirty. It doesn't get a terrible whole lot of use. It's a nice little box. Got a mono stereo switch on it, got a filter, and a selector over here. That's pretty much it. And that's what I use for high fidelity enjoyment. I used to have a lot more, <laughs> but I got rid of a bunch of it just simply because I really don't have the as much time to sit and listen to records as I want to between family things and working on the Easy Linux project all the time. But when I do, I like to listen to analog and I like vintage stuff. So that's what this is all about. The digital music, eh, that's handled by the computer these days. You know, it's like eh, casual listening. That's what I do. So anyway, I thought you guys would enjoy this. Uh, just a little look around my audio systems. And you'll have to forgive the dust because this is a hundred year old house we live in here. It was built in 1900 and that's one of the things we're always fighting is dust. If you ever lived in a really old house, you know what I'm talking about. So probably looking at that. Ew, that's terrible. Believe me, we do dust. It's just uh, hard to keep up with. So thanks for watching.